G'day and welcome to our special showdown edition of the Rev Up. Uh, massive game this week as always. Showdown 46. Yes. 46. Get around it, get around it, get around it. And uh, the Crows hitting this game in pretty good form. Both teams are. I thought, I know um, Port had a bit of a shitty week last week. Oh, but shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are, but still. Knocked off West Coast in uh, Western Australia, which is no small feat. So it'll be a good game as always. You reckon? Yep. Ooh, okay. Uh... <laughs> Just talking about last week. Mm. What do you think? All I know is I was right yet again. Game was decided by three goals. My tip was uh, three goals. So should probably just listen to what I say all the time yeah. from here on out. Oh, I'll see you later. See you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, I've heard a lot of people ragging how we played or ragging the game in general. But yep. I tend to disagree. I actually thought it was a good game to watch. Um, yeah, there was skill errors. Yeah, it was a bit scrappy. It was low scoring, but it was hard Tough fought. Game. Yeah, I thought it was entertaining because it was hardly uh, hard fought on on the inside. And then when it did get out into space, finally, and it opened up a little bit, like you know, halfway through the third quarter, it was really yeah. exciting. And Frio have been in form, so yeah, yeah. Like, they knocked off GWS, like we said. They're no slouches anymore. And we pointed out their forward line was pretty potent. Mm-hmm. We kept them to a low score. Yep. Um, you know, a lot to lot to take out of that game. Absolutely. A lot of positives to take yep. out of that game, and. Um, you know, I thought we did pretty well. And we both last week spoke about how the defence was going to be so important. Mm. And that's the way it panned out. Yeah. Our back six really dominated. Fuck, There's... we know what we're talking about, don't we? we well, what are we talking about? Yeah. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Even a, even, even a broken clock's right twice. <laughs> Look, uh, before we crack into it, we were pretty lucky at Crowcast this week to uh, have an interview with Marty Matner. Mm, yeah. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, we were able to talk with the Crows' defensive coach. Yep. Uh, so uh, we'll just uh, kick that off now, and then we'll head into the teams after Marty. We started off with a question about whether the selection panel had a set structure for the defence or whether we picked horses for courses. We melded it together, I guess, and you know, were able to play with each other and spend time. You know, Alex Keith, I think, was probably the big improver over the pre-season, been out of you know, work with the other five or six defenders and learn off them. And I think you've got great confidence in the way he's been able to go about his pre-season. But, yeah, it definitely is a... Um, you sort of... You get your six or seven defenders and then it's, I guess, about, you know, do you need a match-up for the week coming up or is it more about just backing in the guys you've got if they're in really good form and, and going with that? And we probably the last, you know, few weeks we've backed in those guys to play. And, um, you know, we've been really good in, I guess, our... Um, consistency over the last month. I think we've been playing some really good footy and we've backed in those guys and they've been able to do it each week, which is which is a really good thing to do. Marty, that, that really um, opens up an opportunity, I guess, for something I really wanted to um, question you about. Um, and that is the defensive structure. Um, we're going um, terrifically well um, this season. We're, um, as you'd know, we're, we're third in terms of uh, points conceded. Um just a little bit of narrative, I guess, that um, as we started off the year, uh, there was a lot of uh, games where, you know, as supporters, we looked and we think, gee, that you know that uh, that footy is not reminiscent of the halcyon days of 2016, 2017, the sort of the freewheeling, high-scoring uh, days. Um, and I think there was a kind of a perception that um, you know we would gradually get ourselves out of that funk. But then in the last three games, um, we've actually been winning games, and yet. There's still been that um, uh, that really sort of deep set defensive structure, and and I I sort of got to thinking um, through the week is is this now I guess um, re- reflective of us going down a different road in terms of our game style, um, which is much more defensively based, which is uh, your your part of the ground, um, and and I think just adding to that, um, no- notice that uh, in particular with mids like Matty Crouch and um, Rory Sloan really sort of rolling back there and picking up lots of their um, lots of their possessions down in back as well. So I'm just curious from your perspective um, h- how you see us setting up and whether that's something that um, is uh, that will take us forward as the year goes on. Yeah, I think at the start of the year we probably um, had a you know, an idea of you know trying to be a bit, a bit high scoring and trying to get the ball in quickly to the forward line and you know about the focus was about you know scoring but I guess the, it's um it's evolved this year with the it's probably been a few things it's um the rule changes I don't know whether they've actually you know they are the factor but it's probably maybe been a bit of that um you know the six 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 and um teams not been able to probably put numbers behind the ball whether that has any where factor in I don't know um probably also just the way the games played you know teams have changed the way they've played 
I think a little bit, um, which now again is that you know is that caused the, the lower scoring or more defensive games. I don't know. It's probably just been a combination of everything. But I think we've been the last month we've probably you know focused in more on um, a few little factors of probably the contested ball and those sorts of things and and the contest and um, and that's probably put us in good stead. And, um, you know, whether that means we, we will keep more scores in the future, hopefully, um, or higher scores. Um, but at the moment, I think we just, you know, we are winning games, which is the pleasant thing. And however we do it, um, it doesn't really matter at the moment. I think it's more about just winning games and, and getting our um, season back on track in the, in the positive in terms of games won. Yeah. Oh, look, I, to be honest, I absolutely thought it was a... You know, a lot of people sort of talked about the low scoring on Sunday in particular. But, you know, I mean, as a supporter at, at the ground at the game, it was incredibly tense, incredibly tense. And I, um, everyone around me was incredibly engaged uh, with the game. And I know that a lot of people have talked about it being a strange game, but um, it was an incredibly engaging game. And I, and I think the, um, the fact that it was such a battle of wills, um, you know, I, I think that if we, um, you know, if we uh, perhaps retrain our mindset, um, from those 2017 days and, and just sort of enjoy um, that kind of high pressure, high stakes and um, uh, football is, uh, you know, as I said, very entertaining. Yeah, the weekend's game was uh, was an interesting game. It was, you know, talking to the playing group after the game and, and watching it again, it was it was a very a hard, contested, you know, pressure game and um, Fremantle have been pretty good at that this year. Um, you know, they're another team that are, you know, been keeping teams at low scores and um, and have won a few games as well. So, I guess when you know both teams you know want to win it and uh, they're both very pressured and contested, the ball game was going to be a low scoring. But again, I guess we looked at it and we just you know we we felt like that we just had to win the contested ball and and we're able to do that and um, and then that got us you know, been able to get I guess a reasonable score on the board, but also to be able to keep them to a very low score, which is. From my end of the ground and the team defence point of it, it was very pleasing um, against Freeman on the weekend. Martin, as a coach, have you noticed much uh, change in terms of the way you manage the team and, and the communication between coach and players uh, with the new rules around the runner? Uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to change the momentum during a quarter. That's what we've learned. <laughs> um, with, yeah. You know, especially, <laughs> especially with Freeman on the weekend when there was only, what, three goals scored in the first half. Um, I actually think that Paul Thomas, the runner, actually didn't even get out on the ground. I, I think he got out once, I think, in the yeah, first right. half. So um, in terms of him being able to get out and, and give players direction, it's been really hard. Um, but um, I don't know if you've noticed, but Don's been spending a bit more time down on the bench, um, you know, speaking to the players. And I guess his messages to them, we've been able to get out to the players that way. So... Um, which has been pleasing, and the playing group have really adapted really well. Um, it's probably been you know, a real surprise on how well they've adapted to the rules and been able to get message out to the playing group on on things we want to change, and whether that's you know position changes or the way we want to play, or just you know maybe a little tweak here and there. Um, the playing group have been really good, and I think um, yeah, just the ability of those the senior leadership group to be able to um, you know get that message out has been really important. Well, and uh, it's we, we've made the ob- observation that uh, our season turned around when Don started coming down, and I, I guess it, it'd be reasonable to assume that you, as the most successful of all uh, the people in that coach's box, you would have just tapped Don on the shoulder at one stage and gone, "Look, Don, we got this up here. Just bugger off and go and <laughs> chat with the players, and we'll look after the strategy." Is that how it went down? Uh, not quite like that, but um, <laughs> I don't mind. Uh, um, it was. It was a combination of probably um, a few things. Um, I guess, you know, Scott Campriali moving into that more senior assistant role and, and having an overview of, you know, the team structures. Um, he, you know, has a fair bit of input in, you know, what we do on game day and how we play. So, and even during the week about, you know, the, how we want to set up and, and the structures. So, um, and, you know, the line coaches, um, you know, have been... And Mick's coach his own team, Mick God and myself, I've coached my own team, Ben Hart's been around for a while as well. So, But I think it, was, it, it had a bit to do with everything. You know, Don being able to go down and speak to the leaders and the playing the players that come off the ground, um, his influence down there um, has been really good. And, and he probably, you know, him being able to do that has, has been able to help as well. Um, but yeah, I guess it was a combination of, of everything. You know, he probably put a fair bit of trust in us to be able to 
to see the structures and the, and the game up in the box to be able to report back to him down on the bench. Um, but then his ability to be able to speak to the players on the bench, he probably felt like he could get more out of down there as well. And then the message is out onto the ground. So, um, yeah, it, it has worked the last few weeks. Well, we've been winning, so um, it seems to be working. And we sort of do review um, the, how the coaches operate each week. Um, and at the moment, yeah, it's working quite well. And just on that that nice little circle um, you've got, so you started as a rookie with Paul Thomas and he's now in charge of the defence in the SANFL team. I've actually been quite impressed with what he's been able to do the past um, couple of seasons there and also him being that runner. How much work do you and he do to, do together? Um, so, sorry, Paul does the midfield. Um, Paul's the... Oh, the he's now in the midfield. He was in the back lines. Yeah, yeah. So, and then Ben Riley, who also plays with um, at the Crows, he's the defensive coach in the CFL team as well. So, um, yeah, probably, I mean, all those all those development coaches, um, you know, have a fair bit to do with the senior, or the assistant coaches and um, the senior assistants. But, yeah, Paul's probably one, because he, he's the runner, you do spend a fair bit of time, you know, speaking to him about, you know, either... Is the team trying to get a message out through him, or you know which players from my line, especially the defenders, are on the bench um, that I can speak to and maybe get a message out through that way? But um, you know, all the Ben Riley's been great this year for me. Um, you know, working with some of the younger players, um, getting them up to speed so they can hopefully then play AFL footy. And um, yeah, we do. We sort of sit next to each other in the office and um, spend a fair bit of time chatting with each other. But it's a um, yeah, it's a it's a great coaching group at the moment. Um, you've got Matt Wright, who's doing the forwards with Ben Hart. He's also playing captain of the, um, the Sample team as well. Um, and then you've got yeah, Ben Riley and Paul Thomas and Hickey in here as well. So it's a pretty tight group. Um, you know, we try and you know, we spend a fair bit of time together chatting about players and what, how we get the best out of each player. And you'd be uh, pretty happy that at the moment there's a couple of blokes across halfback that play very similar to how you used to play. Uh, Smithers and, and Wayne Miller, even though he's injured at the moment, and then you've got Seeds and even uh, D-Mac back there. Ha- have you be- been able to uh, feed into their experience uh, and give them some advice about how to both be defensive when, when required but also be attacking and aggressive when they've got ball in hand? Um, oh, I think they learn everything before I go there. Uh, <laughs> Come yeah, on, mate, take the credit. Take the credit. Yeah, I'd like to, but I think, um, yeah, I think uh, hopefully I can just impart some of my knowledge of you know, how I how I did play, but also, yeah, you're right, the defensive side of the game, and um, I think all yeah, you know, all four of like I said had really good pre seasons, and um, even you throw in Rory Laird there as well. Um, they've all been really good, you know, the last month as well, and. Um, yeah, just this, the way they go about their footy is really impressive. I mean, both, you know, Smithers has been able to uh, get forward and kick some goals and, and you know, impact the scoreboard. And, but I guess the pleasing thing is the way, again, being a defensive coach, is the way they've defended and been able to um, stop their opposition players from having influence on the game has been the real pleasing thing. And, and like I said, they've just had the bonus of being able to, especially Brody, being able to kick some goals. But, um, yeah, I, I think they... They, again, have learnt a lot in their footy career and hopefully I can just, you know, tweak a few little things and give them some few ideas and tips and, and hopefully, yeah, they do get a little bit better um, and uh, and we all get better as a group and a team. Just chuck them your tapes, mate, and just drop the mic and walk away, you know. That's all you need to do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'll just give my whole lot really out the football team. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of young guys in the SNFL which um, also play very similar to you in Shoal and Hamill. Um, so I, I quite like the fact that there seems to be, even though these guys that we've got that, that SNFL are quite young, they seem to be putting on quite a nice bit of pressure on those who are currently in the AFL team. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and that's sort of how you want the, the system to work. You want those young guys to, to start improving and getting better and, Ben Riley's done a great job with them, um, especially you know, Will Hamill and Shoal. They've, they've come in and um, both really impressed in their, in their Sanford game so far. You can throw in a Darcy Fogarty who you know, will start as a forward that's been playing defence the last few weeks. Um, Brent's worked really hard with those three probably to get their improvement up to the standard where if we do need them, they can come in and play um, AFL. Uh, and then you've got Andy Ottman and the other one's Luke Brown who's um, come back the last week. Played against Norwood last week, and yeah, he's, um, he's 
done really really good job, Brent, getting those guys up to speed. And, and Luke played, uh, like I said, against Norton last weekend, and hopefully he'll put his name up for selection maybe this week. Um, we'll see. Uh, but hopefully in the next few weeks. So obviously this week we've got the uh, the showdown coming up and uh, you would have played in one or two. Uh, so you understand exactly what the pressure's like and having uh, grown up in South Australia, you know what the rivalry's uh, like. Um, the team seems pretty settled. Uh, from my memory, there doesn't appear to be any injury concerns coming out of the Fremantle game. Um, and obviously you're not going to be uh, divulging anything uh, too dramatic. But uh, do you see, uh, uh, with their outs, do you see mm-hmm. us gaining any sort of advantage uh, uh, in the midfield or... or or with our, with our structure uh, based on, on their outs at the moment? Because they've got a couple. Yeah, they do. Um, I noticed today in the, in the newspaper or the, I was sort of listening to the news that there was a couple out. Um, you'd like to say yes, but when you look at a few of the players, they're going to, they, well, they were talking about bringing in, and you've got, um, I think it was Broadbent and uh, Tringrove, and uh, there's one other. So, you know, you do, you hope you do, but then you bring in, you talk about those names, and then, you know, there's a number one draft pick in there, and Broadbent's played, you know, a lot of footy and, and he's got some good experience. And so, um, oh, yeah, I think it doesn't matter what team put out on the weekend, it's going to be a really hard, contested game, and we know that the rivalry normally lifts both teams, and, um, you know, it's, it's, they're always a tough game. There's always, you know, finals atmosphere, big crowds. Um, and it's going to be a, it's going to be on on um, Saturday night um, in the showdown, and yeah, I, I, it doesn't really matter. I don't think who put out there, they're pretty confident. Um, they've been in some really good form, um, even against Collingwood. They didn't play well in the first quarter, but their last three quarters were still pretty good, um, and they have been playing some really good footy. Uh, a couple weeks ago, they they beat the West Coast in Perth and and did it comfortably. So. Yeah, I think they'll have a lot of confidence um, and they'll be confident whoever they bring in, they'll, they'll compete and um, want to win the game as well. A few whispers about uh, maybe bolstering the ruck stocks with uh, JJ coming in. Uh, is that on the table? Oh, well, I guess it'll be discussed. Um, you know, we, we sit down the mass committee to ask them after training and we the team um, more to length in. But, yeah, I guess we go through the whole team and find out yeah, and look at Port and how we think we can get an advantage and, and where do we think we need to maybe make changes to win the game. But um, it's pretty hard at the moment to, to crack into the side that has won three in a row and, and done been pretty impressive the last month. So, um, again, yeah, we'll, we'll assess that after training on uh, tomorrow and uh, Thursday and have a look at what the team looks like and, um, and how we go about winning the game and who's best fitted in that. Does Kyle Hardigan walk around with a, a little CD of his best highlights against Robbie Gray in the showdowns? Yeah, he does. He, uh, he keeps him warm. He's done pretty well against Robbie uh, the last couple of times. Um, so he's uh, and, he, and he had a really good game on the weekend as well. He's back in probably his best form as well. So it's perfect timing, but I, I'm not sure if Robbie's going to play this week. So no, he might he sleep a little bit easier. No, he's, he might yeah, sleep he's a still little out. bit easier later in the week. So have to drop might have a... Just drop him because you know he's got oh. no got no role to play. He's got no matchup. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Matty, it's been fantastic having you on. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, giving us your time. Uh, uh, we love having uh, uh, people on from the Crows, and it's always a privilege to talk uh, to players and coaches down there. So all the very best. We've uh, we've enjoyed your work both as a player and now as a coach. Um, uh, so all the very best for uh, Saturday night oh, Thank you very much, thanks for having me So what do you think, a couple of interesting things to come out of that mm. Hardigan's CD that he ca- carries around Yeah, it's a little bit um, <laughs> a little bit of insight into Hardigan's mindset I don't mind it no. uh, he, he, and he's not half wrong, I mean Gray did kick five goals in a quarter last time or oh, Two times ago we played him, but that's all right. Yeah, we'll, let that we'll, we'll, we'll let that slide. Let but that slide. I thought it was good insight into how the coach's box has been working, though. Mm. I liked the fact that um, he talked about the fact that it seems like Camparelli is up in there, sort of watching over everything while Pike's down on the on the on the bench enforcing it. Um, and it seems like there's a bit of trust with the the assistants to sort of be able to do their own thing and then feed it back down. Does that mean Campo's the real head coach? Don't know. And Don's just the figurehead now. Just the just the face. Just the face. <laughs> nah, you got to give Pikey a bit more credit than that. But I do think it's interesting that Campo seems like he's got a lot more control in that coach's box. Don't know whether I like it. I like the setup. 
I like how they've got someone senior up there watching over everything yep. and then Pikey on the on the bench yep. uh, enforcing it. But worries me that Campo's in charge. I don't know why, it just does. Yeah, so the setup's right, the personnel, yeah, yeah maybe. maybe. Know, it's working. Like like Marty said, it's working. Yeah. Um and it, like they're reviewing it every week, which is good. It means yeah. they're on top of it. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. If it's working, like if it's not broke, don't fix it, but still. Well, like we said last bit. week, it's very much like the NFL setup with all the yeah, analysts yeah, yeah. and that yeah. out the top yep. and the head guy down the bottom passing the message. And like, as he mentioned, it's very hard to get messages out now. Yeah. Thomas only getting out once in a half yeah, well, like because of the low score. We, no one kicked a goal, yeah. So I guess, you know, the value there is that Pikey can communicate during the quarters and, you yeah, know... As, as they're coming off, yeah. Yeah, and work on changing momentum or tweaking or mm. positional changes or yep. whatever. So, you know, uh, and we've seen other coaches do it, so... It seems to be the way of the future, and, yeah. and until they, well, I would imagine that most teams would either, would either have our setup or a hybrid where they'd have a specific person down there yeah. communicating, like a, a senior assistant or something on, yep. the, on the floor. Yep. But I think it's important that Pike's on on the ground, to be yeah. honest, because if the buck stops with him and the message is coming from him, I think it's much more powerful. Yeah, instead well, of it being coming from an assistant. Yeah, I think we had we used. I think at the start of the season we had Heath Uni. Uh, down on the bench and I know we have in the past had Heath mm. on the bench uh, communicating with the players or you know del- delivering messages so mm. uh, I like it mm, I do it's working yep let's crack into the team shall we alright we're starting with Port first yep let's uh, do Port so starting from the full back line we've got Matty Broadbent who's back in um, and then full back we've got Tom Cleary other back pocket we've got Dan Houston half back line we have Ryan Burton centre half back the Dukes Dukes how? <laughs> Don't make me do that again. The dudes. Nah. And then the other half back flank, uh, DBJ. Uh, center line, we've got. You're a bit chummy with these port guys. Are you? Are you a closet? Are you, should you be on this cast? I just don't want to say his full name. Right. It's stupid. Right. <laughs> Like, how many first names do you want? Yeah, fair call. Um, and then you got your centre line with Dersmer, Rockcliffe in the guts, and Amon on the other wing. Half forward line, you got Todd Marshall, Justin Westoff, and Stephen Motlops come back in as well. Interesting selection, that one. It is, especially because um, all reports, he hasn't really been setting the world mm, on fire not really. in, um, in the twos. But Looking anyway, for a bit of magic. Well, maybe they just want him to get one kick right at the end yeah. of winning the game. I yeah. mean, I guess if he does that, his selection is justified, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, full forward line, we've got Sam Gray, Paddy Ryder, and the uh, Connor Rosie, who yeah, is, in, about is, Connor Rosie. is in the wrong colours. But anyway. Yep. Following, we have Scott Lysett in the ruck, and then Sam Powell, Pepper, Trav Boak as the rover, and then interchange, Willem Drew, Aiden Johnson's back in, Jared Lineart. Lean it. Lean it, whatever. No, L-I-E-N-E-R-T. Lean it. Line it. Not lean. Lean it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kane Farrell was a bit of a live wire down forward as well. Lean it. Line it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it's spelt, mate. Look, I think the biggest uh, uh, story out of that selection is the outs. Yeah, look. Wines, Ebert and Butters. <sighs> Yeah, and look, apparently Wines has got a fracture in the fibula or something like that. Yeah. Is it fibula? Say that fast five times. Fracture in the fibula, fracture in the fibula. No, I can't do <laughs> no. it. Especially not after a turkey and a half. Yeah. Um, and then Brad Ebert obviously being out is a big one. I guess they've just decided to rest Butters because they've been resting those three youngsters yeah, yeah. all year. Bit of a stitch up resting him in the first showdown, but whatever. Mm. And then Riley Bonner has been omitted because I think he's been stinking it up, to be fair. Yeah, it hasn't been good. No. It hasn't been good. For the Crows, only the one change with Gibbs coming out with back spasms. Yeah, so we had... Is there a bigger story with Bryce? Well, it feels that way because, what, two weeks ago it was gastro, which is the excuse that I use when I don't want to go to work. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden it's come out that he had back spasms last week as well but played. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. It could be a coincidence, but... Could be. I think the, the trust has lost a little bit with the the... The injuries that we've had last year and you know hiding what they really were now yeah. we don't trust anything they say no, anymore no, 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 that's right <laughs> there's but, always something behind it yeah, that's right it's yeah, a real yeah, story yeah, yeah. but and look Gibbsy hasn't been playing that well anyway really oh. and Luke come on he's been and, playing a rock come on Luke <laughs> <laughs> but Lukey Brown's a really good in uh, particularly yeah. uh, match up wise this mm. week so let's go through the team yep Laddy uh, in the back pocket, so obviously not cutting it at centre half back. No. They've pushed him back to the no. pocket. No. Don't rate his spoiling ability. No. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> plays tall or small. <laughs> yeah. uh, Daniel Tarly at, at fullback. Kyle Hardigan just finding a little bit of form, except for that one last kick. Yeah, but see, he rates himself. Rates himself, yeah, as it turns out. <laughs> yeah. he'll, be, he'll be looking for Robbie Gray all game. Yeah, well, where the hell is he? No, and then he'll Gray. go to Sam Gray. Yeah, like, Hang on. <laughs> You're wearing the wrong number, Robbie. Yeah, that's right. Where's your brother? <laughs> yeah. It's not his brother. Yeah, right. I know. Uh, Brody Smith uh, at half back. Alex Keith, uh, the the king of the defence at the moment at centre half back. Keith the king. I D- like that. D Mac the reborn. Oh, David I'm, McKay. I'm turning into a fan. You've got to be on it's board. Getting, so. It's getting full on. <laughs> yeah. Across the middle, we got the Gooch. Yeah. Gets another run. Do you reckon he's lucky to get a run? Well, I think if you're going to put him in, you need to give him a couple of games. Yeah, fair call. Uh, interrupted pre season. Yep. I think he deserves another run. Yep. And we know what he brings. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Brad Crouch in the middle. Rory Atkins a little lucky on the other wing. Uh, Riley Knight also a little bit lucky at half up. forward. Uh, Tex at centre half forward. Uh, Lynchy the Lynch pin on the other flank. Lockie Murphy the uh, pressure machine. Are you going to give everyone a nickname or what? I'm working on it, you know. Don't. The big E. <laughs> 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 Mr. Elliot Himmelberg. Yeah, that's Show a bit of respect. Huh? The big easy. Mm. Uh, the Berg at full forward and uh, Eddie Betts loves these games. Loves these does, games because they don't have a matchup. Highlight reel. Yeah. Uh, rucking Riley O'Brien coming off his best ever AFL game. Not that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hate to be cynical, but well, you know, call a spade a shot. Was, was I wrong? No, you weren't. Right, Matty Crouch, uh, who also played well last week, mm-hmm. and uh, Sloney, who always plays well except always. when he's tagged. Uh, uh, in a ch- sh- in a change, <laughs> don't shush me. Uh, we got Huey Greenwood, uh, Jake Kelly, also lucky in my view. Uh, Lukey Brown back in as we mentioned, and C E Y Curly, Curly boy, rounding it out. So as we mentioned, only the one out, Bryce Gibbs. Be interesting. Uh, the emergencies, no JJ, mm-hmm. no JJ in the emergencies. Oh my. We've got is he sweating in the twos? You reckon? Is he going shit, mate? We're going to play again. Has JJ ever sweated? <laughs> <laughs> Not through physical exertion. Might sweat about his NFL dreams. <laughs> then, but... <laughs> what about my ESPN contract? Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, that's unfair. Well, Sorry, it yeah. is unfair, but it's it is interesting mm. that we've got Hunter on the bench as the on the emergency bench as the is backup ruckman. Is it a, a deliberate kick in the guts to JJ to sort of spark a bit of something something in him for the twos, well, or do we not form. read anything into it? Well, I think it's form. I just think it's form. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, do we... Is it something to show JJ, well, mate, you're not close to getting back in. You need to show us something in the twos because you haven't been. Well, I think that's probably the message that it gives. Hmm. But I don't know whether they've deliberately done that because I don't think his form warrants being anywhere no, near the team at I the moment. I agree. Well, if you're playing twos and you're not even kicking goals... Yeah, that's right. And... We had a pretty good resurgent win against uh, Norwood last week, and uh, he wasn't part of. It. Interesting when, like you consider last year, he's probably our best forward. I know that he was by yeah. himself a lot of the time, but yeah. you sort of look at his form last year, and you're looking at yeah. this year, and he's a shadow. Well, the game's been played differently. Mm. Um, our, I think our structure, as Marty pointed out, is a little bit different, particularly over the last month. I genuinely thought that the game, the rule changes, would suit him though. Because he would, you'd think he'd have more space and you just kick it on his head. Yeah, but you think about it. Mm. The big knock on JJ is that he doesn't lead up. He doesn't hit, yeah, the, he doesn't hit the contest. And what we saw in the first couple of weeks was exactly that. A lot of this. Yeah. Kick it's it like, over mate, the you're back. you're in a goal square. You can't a lot of, go over the back. A lot, of, a lot of whinging about the ball not being kicked mm. up over. Um, it's not JJ's style to be an aggressive, assertive forward. And yeah. I think... Like he's he's almost opportunistic the way he plays forward, and I don't think at the moment the way it's teams not, are setting up. Well, it's definitely been a lot better since he's um, been switched out for the ease. Well, the ease hits the ball. Mm, that's what I he mean. He creates a contest. Yeah. He brings the ball to the front, and yep. uh, little guys love it. So and Tex loves it because oh, yeah. he's getting some space. Although it was well held last week, Tex. But yeah, but I don't think we paid uh, old PC enough credit last week when we did the show. To be honest. No, I agree, yeah. and I think both defences last week played really, really yeah, well. I think we were just a little bit more efficient. I don't think Tex played badly, I just think it was a really good tussle yeah. between the two. Mm. All right, so go through the key players now, and look, we? yeah, we will, because, right. and look, I'm pretty happy, because normally I'm... Because you're be, covering Port? No, because... And not, you're a closet Port, Port fan? I'm going to smack you right in the mouth. You're wearing black and white. 
<laughs> this is navy. This is navy. I'm going to make sure it's black. <laughs> I'm going to make that one teal. <laughs> hang on, I might have teal socks on. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Nah, look, I'm pretty happy because normally I'd be talking about Chad Wingard because he always cuts us up. Yep. And he's a freaking yeah, knob. Does so, this. Yeah. A bit of this. So I'm glad he's not in anymore. Yep. But the other one that always cuts us up, and he's been pretty consistent, but in previous years he's not normally, is the Hoff. Mm. And I feel like that he's their most experienced player, mm. bit of a barometer for him. Mm. If he's getting up around the ball, getting his 20 touches and his kicking goals, mm. that will go a long way for them winning. And like I said, he's in good form at the moment. And really, like, Tali is probably not going to go with him if he's playing up the ground. It'll probably be Keith. Um, or obviously Hardigan as well. No, I think probably Keith, I reckon. But yeah, and, and you know, he's a he's a weird matchup because he's mobile. He's got good aerobic capacity. He's got good ish skills. He's kind of weird because he makes the hard look easy and the easy look hard. So he'll do the mercurial things, but then we'll miss someone lace out twenty meters away. So you know, he's a bit of a weird one. But if he gets on top, he's pretty pretty impactful. Yep. The other one that I wanted to talk about as well was Trav Boak. So, I think Trav... Talk about reborn. Yeah. And, like, there's been a bit of talk about him, you know, getting rid of the captaincy and yep. all that. But I also think that he's been a bit injury-plagued um, in the last couple of years as well. Just, just sort of getting himself up for games rather than actually being yep. uh, cherry ripe. And it's definitely showed this year because he has turned back the clock 100%. Yep. Um, you know, he's captain this week, but I don't think that's going to make two licks of difference, mm. to be honest. Nah, it's showdown. He always gets up and show. Yeah, that, that's tough. You never know. His thumb might be really sore <laughs> after, the, <laughs> after the coin toss. Um, but then the other one, and look, we're going to have a bit of a sook about this because he's playing in the wrong colours, mate. Yep. Connor Rosie has been lighting it up. And look, he's been a little bit inconsistent, but he's a young player. He's and a he's, kid. And he's playing one of the hardest roles in football, which is half forward, forward pocket. But God, he's got Cutting some it. talent. Oh, oh look. goodness gracious. Look, we're going to look back on this draft, I think, and think... And look, no yeah, we, disrespect to Chase and oh, absolutely Ned not. and all it's, the rest it's of It's not it. about that. It's not about that. Jeez. We fucked we up. we just worked a no, little no. bit harder to get into, into the top four. Recruiters will look back and go, we fucked up. Even yeah, if probably. Chase Jones turns into a superstar and even if Ned Henry turns into a 250-game player, we will look back and go, we fucked up. Could we do a Brad Symes? Maybe. And just like get him over after his... Fit or... or you know, Matthew Bode. It's highly unlikely, but yeah. never say never. Yeah, no. But look, if Connor Rosie plays like he did a couple of weeks ago and kicks five, goodness gracious. And like, you look at our back line, who's really going to go to him? You've got Brownie, but then you've also got Sam Gray in the other pocket. So well, I reckon Hardigan will go to Gray yeah. just because of the name. It's difficult <laughs> for get... Kyle to understand, but he's going to see Gray and it's going to be like, <laughs> oh yeah, Gray. And it'll yeah. be all right. No, but the number will confuse yeah, him a little bit. But he'll still play on anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he's probably had it in his <laughs> on his like mirror in his car all week. He's had the little picture of the different number just to get used to it. But the grey, when they go, when you know they call Sammy Grey, he'll go, oh shit, yeah. So it's probably going to be Lairdy <laughs> <laughs> that, that goes to the uh, the the should have been crow. Uh, in nah, Connor it'll, it'll be Brownie. Brownie will go to him. You reckon? Yep. Because he's our lockdown defender. So, you, well, that means that that means that means um, Hardigan probably go, ends up with Stephen Motlock. Nah. Hardigan will go with Todd Marshall. Well, so, all right. So, they've got Gray, Rosie and Motlock as their, as their smalls mm-hmm. up forward. Mm-hmm. So, we've got Laird, Brown, who's starting on the bench. Mm-hmm. And what? And Jack Kelly. Okay. Right, key players for the Crows. Um, look, I'm going to start with the Berg. Hmm? I think uh, the Berg has settled in nicely. I think that he's going to have a big role to play this week because Riley O'Brien's been in good nick. Mm-hmm. Uh, surprisingly good nick. Yeah. Come on, surprisingly good nick. You know, you can only beat the bloke that jumps against you. But he's got two pretty decent ruckmen this week. Pretty decent. Well, you know, Lysa, Lysa is a very good ruckman and uh, Ryder can cut you up with his tap work. Yeah. So he can kick go forward and kick goals. Exactly. Yep. So O'Brien's got his work cut out and I think a lot will depend on how Elliot can back him up. Uh, not only in second ruck, but also to make an impact up forward. Mm-hmm. I think... Um, 
it's it's a real uh, feather in Elliot's cap that he's been able to string a few games together, and mm. I think that he's grown in confidence every week. I think Tex gets around him a lot. I agree. I think they all do. I think he fits our structure really well. Seems to be a bit of a favourite amongst the boys as well. I've noticed. Yep. Um, and I reckon I reckon we just could see something from the Berg this week. Um, and the bit other of a, bit of a coming out party, you reckon? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. What a game to do it! I'd love it if he did. Oh, wouldn't it be fantastic? Oh. Yep. Cult hero, straight away. Uh, Keithy, obviously, is another key. Um, I reckon... King uh, Keith. King, King Keith. Keith. King Keith. Yeah. yeah. Cool. King Keith. You, you complain about my nickname. Yeah, well, I'm just giving uh, you a good one, because you're the crap. Mr. Alex <laughs> Keith. Uh, <laughs> Ex-cricketer, yeah. Alex Keith. But do you know you used to play cricket? No, I did, actually. It's amazing. Well, you know you used to play cricket? Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, I reckon he's got uh, he's got the job on Westhoff, I reckon. Yeah, and I reckon that's going to be uh, like as you said with Westoff, he does cut us up. If Justin Westoff could duplicate his form that he usually brings to showdowns with other games, he'd, win a freaking he'd be Brownlow. He'd be Port's best player. He'd win a freaking Brownlow. I'm not even kidding. So, but Keith's got a, a job not only to keep Westoff in check, but also to continue to provide that intercept and that drive. Yeah. And I would imagine that one of Port, if Ken Hinckley has got any sort of sense whatsoever. <laughs> He will recognise it. <laughs> All right, we might as well not continue that. <laughs> no, that's unfair. I just couldn't get myself. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. But, you know, if they're thinking about it, one of the things they want to do is is uh, stop our bounce out of, de- out of defence. And yep. Keith has been uh, integral in that because he's mm-hmm. the intercept marker. And yep. Westhoff is the kind of guy that will pull Keith out of the play yeah, he'll smart. lead up high yep. he'll be up on the wings all that sort of we'll stuff keep him on the, on the move and he'll make him accountable yeah yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Crows structure up with Westhoff whether they sort of mix and match as Westhoff goes higher up the ground and yep. leave Keith down back to do that intercept marking yep. or whether they they you know make it a real one on one battle in which case they're going to have to rely on others uh, to do that in set marking. And, all right, we've got Jake Kelly that can do a little bit of that, but, you know, he may have his hands full as well. So that's going to be a really interesting uh, little uh, sideshow of the game to see how they... how the Crows use Alex Keith and how Port try to counter uh, Alex Keith's influence. Um, And... We need a big game from Rory Act. Can we have a big game from Rory Act? called it last week. Did we get it? No, we didn't get it. I don't think we got it. I think it was a solid game. Like, okay. I think it was a pass. But again, I say it to you every week. We know what we get from Rory. If you're expecting him to... When Rory's playing well, he's hitting up the forwards and he's hitting the scoreboard. Yeah, but we've talked about the fact that he's doing that one where up and about. He, he that game that we played last week is not a game made for Rory Atkins. But it, he has to work out how to be how to be an influence in those games. Like, there's no point in saying Rory, look, if the game gets tight, we don't care. Just keep running up and down the wing. No, that's all good. That's not my point because I don't I don't make selection. But what I'm saying is, when he gets picked, there is no point expecting him to do things that he will not. No, but I'm not asking him to tackle. I'm not asking him to lay someone out. I'm asking him to do the things that he does. Impact the scoreboard and hit up the forwards. And he's got to work out how he can do that in tighter games. And at the moment, we're not seeing it. We've got Chase Jones in the twos. We've got Ned McHenry in the twos. Mm. Um, Chase's emergency as well, so a yep. bit stiff. Well, and he is stiff because he's only out because he got concussed. Yeah, he'd probably still be in, to be honest. You know, we've got Miles Paholke who's been, you know, gagging for a role in the in the ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, even even kids like Shoal and Hamill in the twos that have been cutting it up. So yeah. Atkins and probably include Riley Knight in this as well, who, who's starting to turn into a bit of a turnover merchant. Um, I mean, you disagree on Riley Knight. Yeah, I know we do. Um they need to produce. I have more confidence in Riley Knight producing in terms of his defensive efforts this week, which is what I think he's probably in the team for, so that he gets a tick. 100%. But the rat, what he's good at, he needs to produce that in a tight game as well. So he needs to be hitting up the forwards, and he needs to be jagging one or two himself as well. Is he really a key player for us, though? Because I don't think he is. Well... 
I think he is because he gives us that he gives us yeah, but we that run through the middle. We can win without him. He's not a key player for mine. We can't win with the, without the other two performing well, necessarily, like Himmelberg, less to an extent, but definitely Keith. Whereas the Rat, he can sit outside and get 12 touches and we could still win. Possibly, but I think for Rat's long-term future in the 22, mm. so maybe it's a key game for him. Okay. He's a key player of himself? Yes, he's, he's, <coughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> he's a showdown spin-off the Rory Atkins story he'd love that would he, would he, oh, he'd, he'd get his that. hair blonde yeah. again for that yeah absolutely I think Port's defence is where they're going to struggle to be honest with you individually they look alright mm. but collectively they haven't I don't reckon they've really gelled well they definitely struggled last weekend Darcy Byrne Jones god that's a mouthful can't I just say DBJ can I say DBJ just do it DBJ really struggled on Portland. Stevenson Stevenson sorry um, red wine's obviously gone my head. <laughs> yeah. um, and like I think that they've really struggled without Jonas back there he's obviously a bit of a general for yeah, them because yeah. um, you've got Cleary in Houston and Ho- at Hoogle Howard <laughs> cut off she is Dougal Howard and like they're not necessarily young but a little bit unexperienced um, and I think they really benefit when Jonas is in the team. Yep. You've got Matty Broadbent coming in who's a bit of an older head that'll help them, yep. but he's not really that general that I think Jonas is. First game in 600 and something days for well, Broadbent. I was going to say, when was the last time Broadbent played? A long, long time yeah. ago. Probably and he was, he was good. Like, showdown 41. 2016, he was one of their better players, I have to admit. Oh, yeah. Like, that rebound off halfback was yep. sort of... Pretty consistent. Pretty electric at times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yes, agreed. Um, I think Ryan Burton's going to be interesting because he always cut us up when we played against Hawthorne, but I wonder how he's going to be when we play. Yeah. When he's in I don't the think he's got the same players around him. No, <laughs> that's true. Um, but yeah, so it will be interesting to see how that all pans out with the back line. Look, you know, and we've got an interesting forward line now because you've got Tex, who's, you know, the experience. We've got Eddie Betts, who's the, the showdown master. But mm. aside from that, uh, you know, we've got Lynchy, who's... Uh, going to play up a fair bit. We've got Himmelberg, who's fairly new. Uh, we've got Lockie Murphy, who's also fairly new. We've got Riley Knight, who's probably, in my opinion, struggling for a bit of form. We'll probably see a bit of Huey Greenwood up there. I've um, seen Huey up there. Yeah, I do love seeing a bit of Hugh Greenwood up oh, there as well. Goodness gracious. Um, but uh, it's an interesting forward line to match up on at the moment. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, personnel-wise, whether Porter picked the right defence to match up. Yeah, well, I think they're a bit... Um, hands are tied in terms of who they've got. Like, who do they bring in apart from those guys? Like, that's bit. It. That's about it. It's probably it. You got Hartlett, who I don't know what's going on. I know he's been injured, but I think he's running around in twos at the moment. If I'm correct, I think or, so. Actually, no. Correct. Correct myself. I'm pretty sure he's got hamstring right. issues. I know he's come back from his knee, but I think he's got hamstring issues. But still, apart from that, that's all they've got. Yeah. Apart from Jonas, who we've already talked about. That's that's bit it. Yeah. So yeah. Look, across the midfield, it's going to be interesting. Uh, Rockcliffe's not... A couple, couple of balls in there. A couple of well, balls. Well, I mean, Rockcliffe's knocked up getting the ball for them, but you could argue that he hasn't necessarily been damaging with his disposals. He gets a lot of... Um, cheapies out the back. Uh, I wouldn't say cheapies, but he's he's good at spreading and he gets a lot of their marks and their releases. Yeah. Um, I, I think cheapies is a strong word. I wouldn't say cheap, but then you've also got Sam Powell Pepper, who's a ball. He's not... Glamorous, but he's a hard worker and he goes and gets it. Can be a little bit... I didn't mind Power Pepper against Collingwood last week. He's probably there, one of their better, to yeah, be honest. Yeah. Um, and the thing about Power Pepper is, yeah, he, like I said, he's not glamorous, but he tries really hard, yeah. goes and gets the agate. Sometimes he fuss, um, fluffs the possession, but you know what you're going to get from him yep. every week. Yeah. You know? And I know he likes getting out to Hindley Street, but we'll leave that alone. Yeah, another time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you got Trav Boak as well who's been in really good form, who can go inside and outside. Um, so I think the midfield battle is going to be really strong in terms of how they line up against us. And well, contested ball is going to be hot early. Yeah, well, and particularly if they're getting first use from Lysa and yep. Ryder as well, you know. Um, it's it's easy, like it'll be interesting to see how quickly we adapt if they get on top in the run, mm. whether we start getting ultra-defensive in the midfield and trying to shut it down and making yep. a real cold face contest. Yeah. Or whether we continue to try and back Riley in, mm. um, I, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm a bit afraid for Riley this <laughs> be week. Afraid, be very, I very am. Afraid. Well, <laughs> I mean, 
It's probably the best rock combination in the league, let's be honest. Lin- uh, Lysa and Ryder. Uh, who, I mean, there's better individual ruckmen. I don't know. Pruce and Gorn is a pretty good combination, no. but they don't play Pruce. Nah, they are. Both, both these blokes could play first ruck in any team. Well, they do. No. Ryder's not playing first ruck. Oh, I suppose. Well, that's they, what I'm sorry, saying. They did, I should yeah. have said. Yeah. Well, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Pruce could carry a first ruck role uh, in, a, in a good team. Yeah, maybe not. So I reckon it's the best combination in the think, league. I'm just trying to think. No, I can't think of no. anyone better. So, you know, that's a big ask for a four or five game player who, he, I mean, O'Brien does have a really good engine. Mm. He will run all day, but he's pretty light. Um, uh, yeah, no. And he can get pushed around a bit, and I reckon Lysa in particular is going to take advantage yeah. of the, the Lysa, mismatch in Lysa is a nightmare matchup for Rob. Yeah, It's funny, I was actually talking to one of my mates, and it, it sounds a little bit outlandish, but why not play Riley O'Brien as like a tagger for someone around the ground? And it sounds a bit weird, but if... Won't he be tagging the Ruckman, though? Yeah, but that's my point. Like, play him on someone where you come up against the Ruck combination like Ports, where they've got two genuine first Rucks, and just tell him all you've got to do is 50-50 every contest and make sure he doesn't get the ball. Was your friend drunk? No, he wasn't. Um, I think we actually might see Riley O'Brien spend a lot of time in defence. I, I think with Ryder down there, I think one of the keys will be the ability of Riley O'Brien to get back and sit in the well, hole. That's a bit. sort of what I'm getting at, though. Like, if he nullifies his opponent, he's got good tackling. Like, he had, mm. I think, five tackles, was it, last mm. week? Yeah. Um, oh, his, his second efforts and ground ball stuff is really And that's really sort of what I'm getting at. Yeah. If he can nullify his opponent, because Ryder can be prolific around the ground and so can Lysette. I know Lysette's skills are a little bit left to be desired at times, but he's still impactful around the ground. If Rob can at least 50 50 his matchup, I think he's done his job. Well, don't don't, yeah, tell, no, him be, don't right. tell him to be attacking. He doesn't need to do that. Yeah, All no, he needs to do is so. stop their impact. And I think well, he's done his job. <clears throat> well, and probably the thing in Riley's favour is that it's going to be pretty cold and maybe wet on Saturday night. Nah, not wet. Well, it's going to be a little bit wet. I heard that there was no showers on Saturday. No, there's showers in the morning, so it'll be damp. Don't don't kill my premise. Well, it's shit. It's not my fault it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> the, dr- the drainage at grounds these days is mint. They, they, it'll be dry as a it's gonna, So it's going to be dry, which is going <laughs> <laughs> to... Like, come on, mate. Yeah, no. Well, if it, it, it will help Riley if it is wet. Um, <laughs> which it won't be. But which no. it won't be. So it's <laughs> yeah, point. So let's move up. on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, look, but yeah, I, I think Port will be working really hard to get first use because mm. their whole thing is about scoring, about moving the ball forward. Uh, it's a bit chaotic. It's um, yeah, well, they've got ball- a huge amount of system involved. Well, they're 2016. Was it 2016, 2015? I can't remember where they got to that prelim and missed out by a kick against Hawthorne. That sort of uh, game style is back. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Was like, that like the West wait, Coast one where they missed wait. out by a kick after the siren? Yeah, twice. Yeah, I know. It's not a bad time. Yeah, although we can't laugh because they did Hawthorne did the same thing to us later. But anyway, we're talking miss, about Paul. missing the point here. <laughs> so they're back to their sort of. Um, play on at all cost kamikaze mm. football mm. Um, which is how Port play and that's when they're playing their best to be fair um, but because well, let's face it that's about as much as Ken can come up with Kenny's actually going to come to our house he's going to find us I was giving him a coke <laughs> here you go Kenny sit down <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah when they're playing that sort of footy they are dangerous we've got to give credit where credit's due but it does leave them exposed going the other way because they all just flood forward or they all just run forward yeah. and it, they are prone to turnover as well so if we put enough pressure on the ball carrier yeah. it'll nullify it very quickly yeah. and that's all that Collingwood did and it's no coincidence that Collingwood being a high pressure team that Port struggled against yeah. them yeah. because that's all yeah, Collingwood because Collingwood just pushed up into their faces the whole yeah. time just Pressure on the ball carrier yeah. and Port folded. Yes, they yeah. might have got on top of the last three quarters, but the game was over by then anyway, so who cares? Well, I think you're right. If we give them, if we zone off and uh-huh. give them space and allow them a bit of a room to yep. run and all the rest of it, they, they could cause some damage. Yep. We do need to be very much man on man focused. I think we do need to crowd them up yep. um, and allow our run to come from half back yep. on the rebound. Yep. So, 100%. Uh, up forward, I think, I, I don't think that they've. It, it's so hard to predict because mm-hmm. you mentioned Westhoff. Todd Marshall's been going all right. Mm-hmm. Don't yep. mind him at all. Yep. Paddy Ryder, we know what Paddy can do. Um, Sam Gray can bob up. Yeah, but he misses everything. Oh, yeah. Connor Rosie, we already know. 
uh, and Motlock can just do the incredible. So when he's on, when he's on, or he'll bob up for five minutes and kick two goals that'll win them a the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I mean, I on the surface, I think we've got uh, the personnel down back and the form you're that all, we're showing. Down you're back. also forgetting on their interchange. You got Farrell, who's a live wire, who I've seen play some very good halves, quarters of yeah. games that. Even though he's gone missing in the other parts of the games, he's sort of set the tone or got them back in or even won them the game yeah. because of him just you know being prolific in a quarter or a half or whatever. Aiden Johnson can be a little bit wasteful, but he is quick and he can be skillful. Mm. Um, so that forward line is all of a sudden looking very dynamic with the way that they've got that set up. Yeah, but you know, it's I reckon we've got probably. I mean, we are number two for um, least scores conceded. Yeah. Yeah, we turn into a bit of a slog at the moment, don't we? Yeah, well, and it's interesting what Marty said before about yeah. working on uh, our running defenders' defensive capabilities, yep. uh, and that's been a real pleasing sort of aspect of their game. Yep. But they're going to have to be very careful, and, and it's going to be interesting if, if we concentrate too much on locking down ports forward. Yep. Are we going to get enough bounce out of that defence, or is it become, going to become a little bit of a slog like the Fremantle game? where there's not a lot of free flowing, it's more just about territory and you know, yeah. and maybe maybe that's how the Crows are playing now. Who cares? As long as we win. Well and again, with Marty saying, you know, at the moment we just want to win a game and yeah. and, and we we know that showdowns come down to uh, throw the form out the window. Who wants it more? Who wants it more? Yeah. Who gets maybe who gets the break? You know all yeah. that sort of stuff. Yeah. They're rarely blowouts. Um, yeah. Well, when the teams are this evenly matched on paper, it's rarely a yeah. blowout. Yeah. So you know, I, <clears throat> I, I think our defence is going to have it. Maybe it's sternest test for the last month or so. I think yeah. because there's a lot of variety there. Ryder can take the mark. Yeah. Westhoff can cause havoc at, both in the air and on the ground. I think last week was a pretty good test for the defence. To be fair, they had. A pretty... I don't. I don't reckon they turned up. Jesse Hogan didn't turn up. Uh, did he not turn up, or did he not? Was he not allowed to play well? No, I don't think he played well. Okay. Uh, judging by his where he was leading to, and all, I don't think Jesse Hogan okay. played well. Okay, uh, and I don't think Cam McCarthy played terribly well. No, he was missing. I thought Tabernard did. We called that one. Yeah, we yeah. called that one. But I, I think they actually didn't get enough out of their tools, Fremantle. But I think, and we're talking about the showdown. But I think. Ross Lyon's got this star-studded forward line. Doesn't use him. And he plays this lockdown game. So what the hell are yeah, you doing? We didn't call that because they've been playing differently. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, we <laughs> won't see that from Port. No. We'll see Port running forward oh, of the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah, we'll 100%. see them, uh, you know, get the ball forward at all costs. They like also, to move forward. They'll also clear out for Ryder. Or if Westhoff drops back, they'll yeah. clear out. And then they'll bring everyone forward and running back through. Yeah. So, you know, we've got to be really careful of that. So you're the uh, you're the closet port fan. How do you win? You need to shut up. How do you win, Ken? I'm about to smack Ken, you in my how phone. do you win? Have, look, just mellow out with the red. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hang on. <laughs> Don't need to ask me, Uh How do you win? <sighs> you got, well, if I'm Kenny Hinckley, mm. you got to stick to you're drinking wrong. You wrong? Mean coke. What do you mean? Well, he doesn't drink wine. He drinks coke. How do you know? Do you Dog. know a bloke? Have you seen the coaching box every time? Yeah, but it's not like he's going to just get, get on, on with it. Well, you just make some silly sense. <laughs> Look, if I'm Kenny Hinckley, I'm going to stick to Port's strengths. Obviously, the chaos ball was a big sort of aspect of their game plan. But like you sort of said to me earlier before we actually started, they rely on a few individuals. So they really need those individuals to step up. Mm. Um, but I really think that contested ball is going to be massive as well. I think that the likes of Rockcliffe likes of um, Sam Powell, Pepper are going to be like really important for them to just yeah. get it out. Yeah. The ruck battle, like we've already mentioned, is going to be important. So he's going to be relying on Lyset and Ryder to get on top and yeah. give him first use. Um, but I'll tell you what, if they don't get back once they've streamed forward, like once the ball gets turned over in their half, if they don't get back, they're going to get cut to pieces because that suits us 100%. Yeah. If we get the ball turned over at half back and we're bouncing off through McKay and Brody Smith and they're not going back with us, yeah. we'll cut them apart. So they've got to really focus on getting first use, making sure that they clog it up when it's going the other way, but then also finish because Port can be wasteful sometimes and they really need to finish. And I was going to touch on yeah. that because I think we're vulnerable to speed, yeah. Adelaide. Yeah. Pardon me. But we know that Port will pepper the forward 50s. Yeah. 
but not necessarily get value for their entries. Yeah, they can be very wasteful. Yeah. And their forward entries are worse than ours at yeah. times. So do we see the Crows play that shutdown around the ball game again? I think I actually think we do. Yeah, 100%. I agree. Uh, particularly early, I think we try and shut the game down because we are vulnerable to their speed. Yep. Uh, we don't have a quick midfield. Uh, we have an inside midfield. And I think selection has been a real pointer towards how we want to play. Yeah. You we know, with picking big bodies in the big midfield. Big body inside mid. And not Greenwood only that, we've actually him. moved Crouch more outside. Have if you, you noticed... Uh, yeah, I've noticed he's getting back a lot as well. He's getting a lot of outside ball. He yeah. seems to be more the distributor rather yeah. than the, in an under type. Yeah. I don't mind it. Yeah, well, we noticed uh, last week, I think it was Pete that pointed out on Tuesday, that mm. we're almost playing certain midfielders in certain sections of the ground. Yeah, it's a fair And Matty Crouch... Uh, is playing sort Half of back. a defensive yeah. Yeah. midfield co- kind of role, yep. but he's not inside around the contest, around the centre clearances, and yeah, all the he's rest like of a it. Kick behind type yeah. thing, yeah. So um, I think we do shut the, the game down. I'd be very surprised if it's a, if it's an open game early. Yeah, um, well, I, I think we'd be naive to let the game be a shootout because I think we lose that game. I think we. I think it puts too much pressure on our defence. Well, it's not just that, but we're not quick enough to play a shootout at the moment. We're better off turning it into a bit of a maul, winning the the upside of contested ball, then getting it to the outside on our own terms rather than just, you know, flip, 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 and then letting the ball fall out. We need to really control that contest because otherwise we will get cut apart. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. And I think it'll be interesting to see whether we play with outriders around those clearances, around those congested sort of... Uh, contests uh, because if we do let the ball get to the outside I think they've got the, the firepower to be able to hurt us um, and I think it also makes our half back line very vulnerable mm-hmm. if we allow, allow them too much time and space oh yeah because then all of a sudden you're nullifying Brody Smith and DMAC exactly when and you, yeah, you're having them you're making them have to be very defensive yeah and accountable and they yeah. can't get into attacking position because yeah. they're too busy worried about their yeah. man so how the Crows win, I do think we actually shut the game down a little bit early on. Yep. Uh, and then you see how the game pans out. If we get on top, you know, perhaps we can open it up a little bit. I'm not sure. But uh, we shut the game down. We concentrate on our dominance on the inside, which I think we will have. Yep. We should, um, anyway. Yep. And we play a slower tempo, which will allow us to repeat inside 50s. Yep. Play the territory game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Don has shown that that's how he likes to play. Yep. I think over the last two or three weeks, we've seen that that's how we like to play. Yep. And I think it perfectly uh, fits with what we're going to need to do against Port Adelaide this week to win. Yep. All right. So how much do we win or lose by? Well, I actually think we win quite comfortably in the end. Uh, I think it's going to be... A- hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Did, have, we, have you tipped the Crows two weeks in a row? Yes. The lid is off for you, isn't it? That is so unlike you. You're the no, most I, I cynical li- crow supporter I've ever met. I, I like the way we're playing at the moment because that, it's that, not... Is that, is that big for you to say? Because you're not normally like that. No, but do you know why I like I like the way we're playing? It's, it's not mongrel, fragile. A bit of mongrel about it? Yeah, mm. it's not It's not one of those things where where it's working per- perfectly, it looks fantastic, mm. but just one thing goes wrong and the whole thing breaks. It falls apart, yeah. It's not like that at the moment it's with the crows. It's not pretty, is it? Well, sometimes it's pretty. Yeah, but what I'm saying is we, we've won ugly the last couple of weeks, really. It, it looks less like a training drill and more like, more like a game of footy. Yeah. Um, and I like that about the way we're playing. So, I think it's, uh, I think we're less prone to get blown out and I think we're more prone to be able to hold other teams. And uh, I think in the end, after a close four, first half, I think we win by five goals. Five goals, you reckon? Yeah. See, I think it's going to be a slog all through Mm -hmm. I think there'll be times where it'll ebb and flow in either favour like you know there'll be periods where Paul will be on top there'll be periods where we're on top how much I'm not sure but in terms of who wins and how much I think we win but I don't think we win by more than two goals I'm saying eight points so quite pessimistic not pessimistic realistic and if (laughs) we look at the form guide I'm quite clearly the one you should be listening to at the moment really what do you mean, really? The proof's in the pudding, <laughs> old man. Old man. I've been all on right. the money for the last, what, three and a half weeks? Yeah, you've gone all right, mm. I have to say. Mm. Mm. But, uh, you know, early days. You want to be a March Premier? No, because... like, Are you even like, in the Crowcast footy tips? Well, no. Because I know I'm better than everyone. Wow. <laughs> oh, 